All right, guys, we're back for another video. Uh, I haven't quite got everything in to get the tank completely fixed up. Uh, we did order some stuff and we got half of it in. So in the next video after this, we should be able to get the tank completely done up. But until then, I got a little bit of free time. We're gonna try and knock out a few things on this car uh, that need to be done tune-up wise, oil change, uh, and maybe clean up the subframe a little bit and try and get some of that old undercoating off and a new coating put on it. Uh, let me go ahead and show you what we got. I also, I should say, man, I hope to get more videos out. I've been real busy. Look, it's Christmas time, work Christmas party, personal Christmas party. We got a vacation coming up this month and then just Christmas and everything else comes along with this month. So it's kind of a busy month for us, but we're going to try hard to keep getting these videos coming out for y'all so we can get this car moving along and get it back on the road. So let's see what we got. So here's the car. It's still on the lift. Uh, down here, you can see we got the muriatic acid. I ordered four gallons of it. That should be more than enough. We'll probably use half and we'll get it inside this tank and get it washed around real good. The thing with this muriatic acid, when you wash this tank out, it's gonna leave that metal nice and clean and it can flash rust real quick. So what I've done in the past is use the muriatic acid to get it clean. And then as soon as it's clean, get it rinsed out real good. And then you use the pour 15 tank sealer and that's what I'm waiting on. Once we get the sealer in, we'll wash it out, get it sealed up and then get the fuel pump in it and get it back in the car. Uh, over here, here's some of the stuff I got out. I think we might try and get done. This is the undercoating I generally use. Uh, I have a little left from a previous vehicle I did, and then somebody brought this over and didn't use it, so I might use some of this as well. Uh, we got a Fram oil filter. We got spark plugs, uh, fuel filter, brake clean to clean some stuff off, cap and rotor. Uh, this is the oil I went ahead and got. This was on sale, so I went ahead and bought it. It's Penn's oil. It's not normally what I usually run, but I'll probably won't have this oil in the car long before we flush it out since it sat so long and we put Mobile One back in it. I typically run Mobile One in all my cars. So here we go, I already got the oil cap off. I smelled it, it doesn't smell too bad, it doesn't smell too burnt. I suspect the oil probably was changed not long before it was parked. But let's go ahead and get it up in the air, get this old oil out of it and uh, get some fresh oil back in it. It deserves it. All right, so here we go. Uh, I got my catch can under here so I can get this oil out. Uh, it's a 14 millimeter for the drain plug. And then also the oil filter is up here. I don't know if you can see it. It's the white thing right above the starter. So we'll get it out to get this oil out of there and get something new in it. All right, well, that's draining. Usually like to inspect this. Looks pretty clean. I think literally, I think he probably changed the oil right before he parked it. Also smells decent, just like I had said earlier. It doesn't smell burnt. It smells fairly fresh. All right, so let's look at what we did so far. So you can see I got the starter drop down here. I had two long bolts like this. Like most starters do, typically two bolts, one here on the bottom, one here up top, real easy to get to. I tried several times to get this filter off uh, from on top, from on bottom, because it's directly above the starter. And I'm guessing just because it sat so long, it was stuck really well. I couldn't really get a wrench in there. I just had help just really trying to get it off. So. It's easy to drop the starter. So we dropped the starter with those two bolts. Now we can get up in there easy, easy access with our hands and we'll get that filter off.
All right, there we go. We got it off. So we can tell it's a Firestone filter, which tells you more than likely the previous owner took it in and had it maintained somewhere else other than his own house. Probably just took it in, got the oil changed done, change done every time. Here's our new Fram filter. And again, the pens oil. Uh, we'll go ahead and wet our finger a little bit and get it along this edge here. That way the filter and the gasket on the filter doesn't bind up and get wrinkling it at all and we'll just reach up in here and get this new filter back on there we go and just hand tight you don't have to over tighten these things you'll just make yourself miserable to get it back off later there we go let's get the starter back on we'll be done underneath and we can get some oil in it all right we got it all buttoned up back here uh, I want to take a second to talk about what we kind of did here. So, like I said, we took the starter off to get easier access to the oil filter. Now, more than likely, that's not what they're going to do if you ever take it in to get an oil change done. But since the filter had been on so long and the card said it was a little stuck and it was just quicker and easier. But it just kind of shows something. So, a pretty often wearable item on cars is going to be your starter. A shop is going to charge you hundreds of dollars to replace one of these things. Guys, they're not hard. Get on YouTube, watch a video on how to do this to your own vehicle. You can save a ton of money. It's underneath your car, it's two bolts, it comes right off. Everything plugs right into the starter. It's stupid simple. So next time you have something like that go out, take the time and think about it and maybe it might be worth your while just to save some money and go ahead and do it yourself. So there you go. So we got that done. Let's lower it down and get some oil in it because I don't want to forget to do it later on and see what we got time to do next. So we got oil in it. So we're going to kind of stick with the flow. I think instead of doing this ignition system, we're going to put that on hold and we're going to go ahead and do the fuel filter since we did the fuel tank drop and then we did an oil change. The oil filter, let's do the fuel filter. That's got to get done as well. So you'll find it. It's just right up here under the engine bay and it is right there. It's that round canister. And it's just held in with a clip. There's a Phillips screwdriver right there. We should loosen that up. It should pull right out. And then it should be a clamp on both sides. And then we'll just put the new one in. It's as easy as that. Uh, also under here, let's talk a little bit. We're going to do some deleting on this. Because this is an 80s car, so they had a ton of emissions. They were testing with exhaust emissions and trying to get stuff worked out different to make them more efficient and more friendly on the environment. So we can delete a lot of that stuff. So you can see here... These EGR valves and some of the stuff that has exhaust running through it, we'll delete a lot of that just to get it out of the way, clean up this engine bay. Uh, we don't need it. We don't have to pass emissions where I'm at, so there's no need for it. And Well, and even if you did, in the state of Texas, since it's uh, older than 25 years, it's a classic, uh, it doesn't really pertain anyways. So one of these days in one of these videos, we'll delete that as well. So let's get that fuel filter out and get the new one in. All right, we got it off, and it was not easy. Uh, it was on there really well. It's not the best, easiest place to get to, but we were able to get it. So it made me bleed. Here's the old filter. This looks like it's more than likely uh, probably the factory original filter. I'm sure it is. And here's our replacement. We got a Fram. Wait for that car to go by. Uh, this one tells you to replace every 120,000 miles. That's really kind of up to you. Uh, I typically do mine sooner than that. And then also you just want to make sure you pay attention on here has the flow. So you want to make sure you install it this way coming from the tank here and into the, your fuel rail up here. That's extremely important. So let's get it on and be done with this stinking project. All right, there it is. We got it back in. Install was a lot easier than taking it out obviously, but it uh, it's back in there now. The clamp is a little smaller, or I'm sorry, the clamp's a little larger for this filter. Uh, this filter was a little thinner, smaller circumference than the OE filter that was in it. I don't think it'll be an issue. Uh, if we do see an issue, we might just put a piece of rubber in between it and the clamp just to get it a little bit tighter and keep it from uh, moving around a little bit. But other than that, that's it. I think that's all I got time for today. Uh, I have a lot of other stuff to do to get ready for a party for tomorrow evening. 
but we'll keep working on it guys we're waiting for that poor 15 to show up again like i said and hopefully it'll get here soon hope this video was a little bit uh educational when it comes to that starter we'll do some more videos we'll have some more stuff coming up pretty soon uh I'm trying to think what else i wanted to tell you i was hoping to do a longer video but again like we're waiting on parts it's it's the holiday season our small post office is overwhelmed. We only have one little lady that works in there and it's a lot for her. So with packages kind of coming this time of year, it's a little difficult, but we're gonna get them in and we're gonna get, get to working on this car. So as always, like, subscribe, share, do all the things. We really appreciate it. Guys keep commenting. I like to comment back. I read every comment. I do appreciate it. Thanks and we'll see you again.